Hi, my name is Heather, and welcome to another episode of Cover to Cover Canva Edition, my series where I share my process with you creating a children's book using Canva elements. As you can see, I have my kitten here today. She insisted on coming on my lap, so I just have to have my computer here and be very awkward while I'm using it. <laughs> this is Domino, by the way. She has three black specks on the top of her head, so her name is Domino. I will include my copyright reminder here. And remember, these aren't instructional videos. They're just to kind of share my process. So if you want more of step-by-step -step instructions, then check out my tutorials that I will link in the description. I have my client's book pulled up here. Remember last time we did this dark moody scene here. So I do have a comment from my client. She says that she likes the scene, but she wonders if it's too much sitting beside the colorful page. So maybe we should turn it into a blob page. So what she means by that is having this whole scene in a blob so that we don't have two full color pages next to each other. And that's actually really good because then I can show you something that I wanted to show you, which is how you can frame a scene that has multiple elements. Because if we look at Canvas frames, if we were to grab one of these frames and try to put something in it, you can only put one item inside the frame. And then what about the clouds and the background and all that? So you can't really frame a whole scene with a bunch of different pieces in it. So I created kind of a like reverse frame type of thing in Illustrator to pull into Canva. And I'm going to show you that. Here's one of my masks that I made. So if I pull it and make it bigger, then as you can see, I can have it frame the scene and then I can just arrange everything underneath that mask. And also, you can change the color of the mask, of course, because I made it an SVG. So if we wanted to have a background color, we could, but I'm going to keep it as white to keep it simple. So I'm going to move this down here, and then I'm going to put the text up here outside of the mask. So I will change the color of the text, and I'll make it black. Let's make it wider. And then... I'm going to go to position and layers so that I can pick the different parts of my scene and position them inside the mask. Now I'm going to just click the check mark and resolve the comment and we'll be able to preview it later when we pull it into simple booklet. For the next page, we'll just do the next ones in the sequence. This says Titan began his investigation. First stop the kitchen. Carl is making pancakes and Karen is sipping coffee. What I'm picturing for this scene is we're going to have the whole kitchen. Titan's going to be walking in and Carl and Karen are going to be doing what it says they're doing here. And that is a lot and there's a lot of text. So I'm going to make this into a spread and I'm going to have it go across two pages. Especially because the stuff on the next page is still basically in the same scene. It's Karen talking. For the kitchen, let's go to elements and I'll just search for kitchen and I'm going to go to graphics, of course, because I don't want a photo. And I'm going to try to find a kitchen that matches the style of Titans illustration, which is flat colors. It's also good to find a kitchen that is long because that way we'll be able to have it span across two pages for our spread. This one looks really nice, so let me resize it bigger. I've made the image so that it's as big as the page, but that's still not big enough because if you look at this little handle right here, that's going to mark the center of the picture. And if this is going to span across two pages, we want the center of the picture to be all the way on the right edge of the page. So I'm going to make this bigger. And now it's pretty much in the center. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger just to be safe. The next step is I want to figure out if I want it lower or higher. And I'm probably going to put it just right about here because I don't really want to like cut off the table legs or anything. So I'll put it like this and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to crop it. So I'm going to pull this little middle section down until it hits the top. So now we know that the top and the bottom are perfectly aligned. 
And this is going to be helpful for when we put it on the next page. The next step is I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to set it in exactly the same spot. So it's just going to snap right to the left and the top and bottom. And now here's the trick for getting a seamless spread. I'm going to grab this little part right here, which is for cropping this little handle, and I'm going to pull it and I'm going to let it snap to this edge right here. So now the rest of it is to the right. Now don't click out of it because if you click out of it, you're going to lose it and it's just going to disappear. But I'm going to grab this and I'm going to pull it to the page underneath. Now we're just going to snap it to the left and have it snap perfectly. Not to the right. You want it to snap to the left because this is the part that needs to be continuous. This is the seam of the pages. And now I'm going to just take this and I'll just crop it in just to make it cleaner. And now we have our full kitchen here going across two pages. We can kind of preview it if we go to grid view, but of course we'll get a better preview later in simple booklet. We're going to have Titan walking into the kitchen. So I'm just going to scroll up and grab one of my walking illustrations. So this is a good one. And then I'm just going to flip it so he's walking into the kitchen. And let's not forget our shadows. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to search for shadow. And actually, I think it would be better to have this not as busy back here. So what if we pulled the kitchen up? And then that way we can have the shadow on a nice solid color, which is going to be this peachy color. And that won't be as busy, but we will need to make sure we have enough room for Carl and Karen to be standing here, because if we make it too short, it's going to cut them off. When I do something like this, I usually just like to use my arrow keys on both pages so that I know how much I moved it up. And if you hold down shift, then you're going to move it up a bigger amount. So I can hold down shift and just click the arrow key once and it goes up that much. I think that's pretty good. And then I'll just do the same thing with this one. So now they'll still be aligned. I'll just make the floor continue. So I'm going to click on the background and change the color. And I'm going to make it that peachy color. I think that's pretty good. And I like that it is less cluttered down here where his little legs are. Now let's add Carl and Karen. Now we have Carl and Karen from one of the last books. So I'm going to go grab them. Here are the Carl and Karen from the other book. Although we are going to want him facing the other way because he's making the pancakes. So we're going to have to find him a new body. So let's go to elements. I'm going to search for man standing, but I'm sure they're all going to be mostly facing this way. Let's try man standing back. Oh, there's actually a lot more here than I would have expected. This one kind of works. I think it looks like he's making pancakes and he's like standing there waiting with his hands on his hips. And the skin color looks like it can probably be kind of modified a little bit to look like Carl's skin color. If we go to edit photo and I'll go to adjust and I'm going to come down here to color edit. And I'm going to pick the one that is the skin. And let's bring down the brightness so we'll make it a little bit darker. And it is going to change some of the other colors in the picture too. But that's just the nature of editing the colors. So, you know, you just got to kind of go with it. I think that looks pretty good actually. So let's use this and then let's just grab his head. And I'm going to crop it so we have only his head. And I can make it a little bit smaller. I'm just going to cover up the face so that it looks more like the back of his head. So I'm going to go to circle and I'll make this smaller. So let's put this here. I don't like how the neck is a slightly different color. So let's rebuild the neck using a shape. As you can see, the neck of the shirt is curved. So we're going to have to be able to have a curve on the shape. I don't see any shapes like that. 
let's search for curved rectangle. This looks pretty good. That seems to fit the curve pretty well. And then we can just crop it to make it skinnier. So I'm going to go to crop and I'll just make this skinnier. And let's make it match his skin color. We do have his head outside of the bleed zone here. This outer guide right here marks the bleed and we don't want anything important to go out of that. So I am going to need to grab him and bring him down further, but we don't want him down too far though, because we don't want him to look like he can't reach the counter. Let's move the background scene down a little bit, but we're still going to keep it as high up as we can so that we can have that extra little bit of room down here. But I'm just going to maybe bring it down like three taps and then I'll do that here too. Now it looks a little more proportional as far as like how tall he is. Let's give him a shadow. So I'm just going to copy Titan's shadow and I'll put it here. Let's also make this legit. So he's making pancakes. So let's find a pan. Since the scene is shown from straight on from the side, we don't want to have one where you can see like the bottom of the pan because it wouldn't make sense. We're not looking at it from the top. We're looking at it from the side. So we want to see just like the side edge of the pan with the handle. This is perfect. It does have that little bit of texture there though, which doesn't go with the style of illustration. But if we just change the color so that it matches the color of the pan, then we don't have that. So I'll make this smaller and I'm gonna flip it so you can see the handle sticking out. And actually you can't see the handle very well. So let's change the color up here. We can make it black. Also, I kind of want to change the color of the pan because there's already so much peach and red kind of colors here. That's pretty. Now we're just going to have Karen standing next to him sipping a cup of coffee. So let's have Lady standing. I found this person here, which has short hair, which is nice because then I can just crop the head off and use Karen's head. But I will definitely need to change the color of the skin here. So let's go to edit photo, adjust, color edit, and this very light pink skin, we're going to have to see if we can make it brown. I think that looks pretty good, but I'll also wait and see what Karen says, if she thinks it looks okay or if it needs adjustment. And now I'm going to click on her over here and crop. We do have part of the shoulder here that we're not able to get rid of because if we were to crop it, then we would crop off part of her head. And we're not able to use the magic eraser on this one, so we're going to have to do something to finagle that. Let's make her shorter than Carl. So I'm going to pull her down like this. And she could also be kind of more in the front, maybe kind of like this. And let me zoom in and see what this looks like where her head meets her body. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit, which does crop off part of her finger here, but we're going to have the mug anyways, so I think it'll probably be okay. Let me crop off a little more, and actually we could crop off more of this shoulder here, because if I crop it and go like that, I could actually use a shape to rebuild her chin there. We're probably going to have to build her neck anyways. Let's grab a rounded square because her chin is kind of more like a triangle rather than a circle. So if we kind of rotate this, then the bottom of it is like a rounded triangle. So then we can use that for her chin. So I'm gonna change the color of this to match her skin tone. And then I'm just going to go to border style and I'll make it a little bit smaller of a rounded corner. Let's send this underneath her face. So that looks pretty good. Let's just add a neck. I think we could probably just use a rectangle. It almost works, but we have this little bitty part cut off right here. I'll just use a little shape to make that a little more continuous there. Now that I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to grab a coffee cup. Ooh. This is a cute coffee cup. Let's flip it. 
And it might make more sense if she's holding it this way because of the way her fingers are. Let's get rid of this pointer finger sticking out. Now, just to make this a little more realistic, I don't really want to say realistic, but you want to pay attention to details. And it doesn't really make sense just to have it like sitting over her hand. So let's add some of her fingers in so they're actually going around the cup. It's those little details that are going to make your layouts look really professional. So I'm going to make a little finger here with a rounded rectangle. And let's make it the color of her skin. And I do need to make it a little bit smaller, but Canva's not going to let me. So here's my little trick for that. I'm just going to duplicate it so I have two of them. And then if you grab both of them, then it will let you resize both of them down. I think I just want to add some of that dark color that goes between the fingers. Now all we need to do is just fix up the text. We might just need to put a box behind the text. Let's grab a rectangle. I'm going to make it white and I'll make it a little bit transparent so you can kind of see the scene behind it. Now I'm going to show you a really cool trick which is to make only the part behind the rectangle a little bit blurry, and then that makes the text easier to read, but you can still kind of see the background through it. So to do that, I'm going to grab the background image and duplicate it, and I'm going to put it in exactly the same spot, and then I'm going to go to Edit Photo, Effects, Blur, and I'm going to do Whole Image, and I'll set it to... Maybe 28 looks kind of good because you can still see the edges a little bit, but it's still blurry enough so you should be able to read the text through it. Now I'm going to crop this so that the edges just match the edges of the word box. So I'm just going to pull it like that and it'll snap to the edges. And then I'm going to send it back behind the white part. So now, as you can see, some of the colors are still showing through from the background, but yet it's not quite so busy and you're able to read the text. One more thing, I did forget the shadow underneath Karen, so let's add that. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to preview this in Simple Booklet now. So I'll do Share, Simple Booklet Flip, All Pages, and Save. And I'll do View in Simple Booklet Flip. And then I'm going to replace the original one that I had pulled in and convert. Here is the kitchen scene. I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with this, so we'll see what Karen thinks and if she likes it. And that's it for today. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!